Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today I would like to share with you my experience with Fludum Dara number 50. So the theme this time was delay the inevitable. And mm, as I'm recording this video, it's actually still in progress uh, because the compo um, mode in which I took part was finished last night. Uh, so at 3 a.m. my local time, uh, but the jam is still in progress and it ends I believe in three, six hours. Yes, in six hours. Um, let me tell you a few words about the compo which I went with. Um, that's a mode in which you have to work completely solo. You have to make all of the assets and code within 48 hours and your source code must be included. So it's open, everybody can see it, everybody can learn from it. Um, yeah, so I have to say that it was pretty challenging, but nevertheless fun experience. So when I woke up and seen the theme, I knew I will want to create a game about saving the planet. Um, though I quickly realized that the setting is not too original, so I knew I will have to put a twist there. And I decided the twist to be related to core mechanics. So instead of shooter game or something like that, I decided to create a typing game. So obviously we can start it. And then the meteorites with uh, astronomy related terms start falling down. Uh, every five seconds, the difficulty level increases. So you have to focus really because at certain point it really gets overwhelming. We mm, Then every 50 years, I mean, at every year that is divisible by 50, a UFO comes out that if you type UFO, um, triggers the super uber attack, which basically shoots all the meteorites on the screen. So yes, and, and, and to be fair, that's really it. Mm, at the end, there is one small extra feature where um, basically it obviously shows you the, mm, the not, not the record, but your, your, your result. So the year you survived until, and the other thing is um, there is a button with a random term from all the terms uh, in the dictionary I used, um, which when you click just moves you to Google search, allowing you to learn more about that. So here it is. And at this time we have albedo. So what we do, we just click and the page, you don't see it because it opened in another um, screen. So you see uh, Google search opens with astronomy. What is albedo? And you can read about it a little bit. Yes, so when it comes to the graphics, I didn't really create that much of it. So the first thing was the Earth. Um, the, I would say, critical thing here was the um, cloudy background. Because what happens, you know, during the game, the when the meteors uh, fall down into it, basically the light reflects from them, creating a nice kind of explosion or fiery sky effect. Uh, I, I really like it. So that's that's the first thing, Earth, then some variations of meteors, one small UFO, two rockets. Um, I wasn't sure which size I will need, so I created two straight away to do not have to go back um, to it because it, it would literally take me from code to the drawing tablet. Uh, then I have this simple HP bar and to be fair, that was all. Um, at certain point, I decided also to create this small logo it will be probably in sprites yes so um, also nothing fancy here you see it's just the earth with two meteors and a little bit of uh, borders around them and and, and a small gradient uh, done now the magic really happens in unity because if you look for example at my meteor prefab uh, you can see how ugly it is. It, it, it is like ridiculously ugly. Um, but then when you enable the um, post-processing and do some magic with it, uh, add a little bit of bloom and, and so on and so on, everything starts to change. So let me quickly get back here, then look at the same matter here. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 crazy and then on top of that if we have a look at the um at the particle effects and the trial renderer it's it's just incredible 
yeah so you you see the key takeaway here is really r learn your tools uh, learn a lot about the rendering pipelines because they can change how your game looks like like 100 percent like 180 degrees and you see even the lights it's it, it just crazy what it can do so mwah, beautiful Unfortunately, it is not as beautiful when it comes to sound. Uh, and this is because I completely suck at creating sound and music. Um, so what I had to do, I decided to use a free online um, ge sound generator. And you see those sounds that it creates are really, mm, I would say like 8-bit sounds. So they are really not coherent with the graphics and with the music which by the way is <laughs> also generated by ai um, so let me quickly show you the tools i used for them so um, the first thing that i used is let me close the pages mm, so first s s f x r me yes so here as easy as clicking the buttons and you have sounds. Um, you can tweak them. So for example, we have explosion. We say, okay, it's too short. We extend it. Or we don't like it completely. We just regenerate it. Oh, this is much nicer, but still too short. Woo, and now, now we have nice something, right? Uh, so this is a uh, great tool if you're going for uh, like 8-bit graphics, chip tune music and so on, uh, pixel art graphics, um, I would say in most of the cases this really will be all you need. Um, when it comes to music it is much harder to find good generators. I tried some and I didn't like them. Now this is not sponsored video but there is one tool I would like to show you um, because I literally got smashed. Sound draw IO. Um, I discovered it during the game jam. Um, you literally just go to the website, click create music. Um, you can play with the generator itself for free. So you don't have to um, buy the uh, subscription in order to generate the music. But if you want to download it, unfortunately, you have to. Um, let me try. Yes, you have to create an account and you have to pay for the subscription. Um, but it's as easy as selecting, for example, I don't know, we want music for a game. Uh, then we want, let's go with drum and bass. We want it short, just one, uh, one minute. Uh, we want it fast. Here we don't have other options, so not much to select here. Uh, let's go with all the instruments. Then we click create music and after a few seconds we have a lot of tracks ready and we can start experimenting so just a random one not bad um let's go with something different Or yet another one. Nice. So you see, it's li literally just a matter of selecting some options and, and uh, really you get varied uh, results. And to be fair, um, I will definitely be using this for a while, not only for games, but also for YouTube channel. Uh, because I really, really like the idea of having something unique created for me um, that nobody else has. So yeah, mm, definitely recommend this one. If you know any other uh, good music generators, especially if they are free, uh, please let me know in a comment because uh, as I said, uh, sound and music design is not my strong side. Now, something that I'm a little bit more comfortable with is 
coding. Um, now, unfortunately, I have pretty a lot of code here, so I won't be able to go through everything, but there are some highlights which I would like to give you. First of all, the typing um, logic. It is, I think, um, really nice because it is based on the events. So here I have an object which is called uh, live text. And as you see, I have highlighted here the input manager on input method. And all the logic that is related to this highlighting the um, word and then making an action uh, once the word is finished is inside of it. So now, um, usually <laughs> what we do, what people do, uh, we all are kind of um, guilty of that scene. Um, we are putting this type of, of methods in our update method. So imagine you have 150 methods or 1000 methods and every single one in the update method checks if there was any key press. Um, so, you know, with the key press, it might not be that bad, but this type of things tend to get pretty complex very quickly and can smash your uh, performance. So what I suggest instead of that is using events. So you don't listen every frame for the thingy, or you rather do, but you don't make the check every, every frame. But what you do instead, here I have the input manager. Um, what you do, you only wait in one place for the input. So here I have the update method of my input manager. And then once there is an input, I notify all the subscribers of that input and I just pass the information of uh, what key has been pressed. So this way, mm, only, uh, only the game objects or other scripts that are interested in that event um, react to it. And now the cool thing about it is that, <laughs> you know, the other like the input manager doesn't have to know about any other object. So here, nobody could be interested in uh, in this event and that's all right. There could be 10,000 different objects of different types that also would be all right because um, the input manager, the only thing it does, it just says, hey, I have an event, it happened. Um, no. I have tutorial about events. If you would like to learn more about them, um, I will link it somewhere there. Yes, um, so this is one thing. Second thing um, that I would like to show you is the service locator. And this is something I mentioned briefly in one of the um, scripting tutorials. Uh, and I will definitely make a full-fledged tutorial about this one because I think it really saves a lot of time. So usually when you have a game, uh, you want um, kind of you have a lot of services, managers, controllers, you have a lot of stuff that um, kind of we tend to solve using um, either singletons or we have static classes and then we try to get to different stuff from different places then it, it's qu quickly becoming mess and so on so service locator is a um, like a dedicated class to keep everything in one place so here uh, when somehow somewhere i initialize a service uh, or, or the service initializes itself, um, it's registered in the service locator. It's basically just a dictionary, right? And then anytime I need to get that um, service, I literally just use the get method um, and it's literally just passed to me from the dictionary. In case the um, service wasn't registered, I throw an exception and this is just for me to know that I've done something uh, bad. No. Mm, usually what how it works or how I use it is let's have a look for example at there is somewhere difficulty controller. Great. So um, difficulty controller itself is a service. So I register itself in awake method and then I get other services in start method. This separation of awake start allows me to never run into a situation where um, I try to get um, a service which did not yet manage to register, but it will register within a few frames or next frame. So this is really, uh, really amazing. Now, um, I tend to abuse it a little bit and I register not only 
uh, services, but also core game objects. So, for example, a um, great example is a platformer game. You have a uh, the character, so you have the player, and a lot of things is happening to it, a lot of other objects tries to interact or, or, or do stuff to it, change st its state, uh, and usually we either drag and drop it to a field or do uh, some other crazy stuff, create a static instance, different, different, different things. Here, what I do usually when I have the character in place, I literally just register it as it is um, case with my earth object. So when I start uh, in the wake, right, when the game starts in the wake method, I literally register it as, as well. And this way, if any other object is interested in earth, no problem, it can get. It. So that's the second highlight. And now the third highlight, which is the way I manage sound. And this is uh, something I used to be doing in Godo. And I am not really sure if this is a good practice in Unity. However, I really, really like this implementation. So here I have this object, which is called Sound Manager. And on it, I have a lot of um, audio sources. Of course, it could be less, it could be more, depending on your game. This literally indicates how many objects you have to have, uh, sorry, how many sounds can play maximally in this at the same time. Um, so then I have a list of different sounds. Uh, we'll go into that in a second, but basically this is my way of storing um, all of the clips I'm using in the game. Then I have it as a part of the sound manager script. Now, um, so here I grab the, um, the all the audio sources, then whenever any other place wants to play um, a sound. Of course, first it gets the, um, the, the, the sound manager from the service locator and then can just use the play method on it by providing the value of enum specifying which sound it is. Now, I, as a part of play, I just grab the first audio source that is not playing, set the clip to the one that was selected by a developer, and play it, as easy as that. So this allows me to keep all the sound related stuff in one place, all the audio clips in one place. I don't have to wonder, oh hell, where did I put it? Is it on this object or on this one? Or where is it um, placed? Or did I change it? Did I change the clip on every object or not? I have one place and I'm always knowing about it. So, um, yeah, if you if you have opinion about this one, also let me in the comment. I'm really interested what you think. Um, if you are interested in how to create it uh, or create a system like that, also let me know. I will create a little bit better version of it uh, and, and even can create a tutorial about it. Uh, now, important thing, you can see all the code and all the assets I used for the game, I created for the game um, in the description. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions regarding anything that is there, just uh, let me know. Also, don't forget to visit our Discord server, link will be in the description. This is very important because this way, um, you know, you can ask questions, we can answer, I can answer quite dynamically. We already have quite nice community there. A lot of thing is, uh, things is happening and, 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 and it's, it's starting to be a very nice place. So feel invited. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Love you and bye bye.